I've already felt here today, Lord. I want to I said you just be with everybody who's on the altar right now, Lord, and just give them what they need, Lord. If they're asking for for forgiveness, Lord, maybe they have strayed too far away from you, Lord. I don't know, but I said you just you be that comfort that they need, Lord. And I ask that you put conviction on everybody's heart here today, Lord, that needs it. I ask that you just the ones that aren't here today, Lord, and they know they need to be. I ask that you can put conviction in their heart, and you just be with Brother Shane as he gets up there this morning, and you use him as is a tool for you, and you just you, you just speak right through him, Lord. And we just want to thank you for being able to, to come into your house and worship you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I just want to say what a blessing this church family is. And our preacher who preaches the truth. Amen. You guys, our God is amazing, and I thank you so much for all your love and support. I keep praying for me. Lifting Justin up, his family, is going through some hard stuff. I was able to witness to four people yesterday because of the situation that I'm trying to lift them up in prayer. And I just I pray for good four people, too. It's amazing how God works when you're in the gloomest of situations. But it, God, our God's amazing. He can do anything. Amen. All right, if you have your Bibles this morning, go to the book of Numbers, chapter 13. <clears throat> Conclude this little few messages God's laid on my heart has been titled Christians As, and week one is Christians as a Hornet, week two, Christians as, uh, what week one last week? Ant. Christians as an ant. Uh, I've got about 75 million messages in my mind right now, so uh, this week we're going to do one, I mean, y'all have heard me kind of preach on this before, Christians as a grasshopper. And uh, the first two I beseeched and beckoned with you all that that's what we need to be like. And this, this week will be the negative part, what you don't need to be like. And uh, when you get to Numbers chapter 13, say amen. 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 Uh, for those of you that know much, God had prompt, know much of anything about the scripture. God had promised the Jews the land of Canaan. Amen. Yep. There's a land flowing with milk and honey. Now you can go into chapter 13 and learn about some interesting things there that they found when they went in. Uh, but they sent 12 spies into the land to spy it out and sort of prepare for their uh, overtaking of the land, if you will. But one thing you need to keep in mind when you study that, God told them that was their land. Yep. Yep. And it was going to be their land. And uh, I understand that the spies and everything, the Lord kind of, you know, uh, God will wink at our ignorance sometimes. You need, to, you need to get that. And he kind of allowed them to do that. But they went in uh, unbelief. And I'm just going to read you 27 through 33. And I'll try, if time permits, to get into the beginning of the next chapter as we wind the message up. But um, you just need to keep in mind God had promised in this land. You got that in your mind this morning. God promised it. He says it's yours. That's where I'm, I've, I've removed you out of bondage of Egypt. You've been out here in the wilderness. And we're, we're on our journey, our, our exodus to the land flowing with milk and honey. And you need to remember that in your brain, that that had already been promised to them. When God promises something, it's going to happen. Amen. Amen. I don't care what the United Nations says. I don't care what all these people out in this culture says. It's coming. What God has ordained and said, it will happen. Just like the flood happened, like Noah said, God told him it was going to happen. Right. Now, you can wish and think and imagine all you want to try to get it to disappear, but it's not going to That's disappear. Right. Amen. What God says will happen. That's right. And if you save today, you're headed to a spiritual land of Canaan, right. a land Amen. flowing with milk and honey. Amen. And the devil and hell and everything involved in that will not keep you out of it. If you've been saved, God is going to perform that which was started in you. Amen. Amen. Verse 27, and they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled, and very great, and moreover we saw the children of Anak there. 
The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses, just one to keep in your mind, and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are able to overcome it. Amen. Yeah. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Now I want everybody to look up here for a second. The world, the filth of this world, the, the devil's children, they're not stronger than God's That's children. Right. Amen. They might have the loudest whine and the loudest voice, and I know the squeaky, the squeaky wheel gets the oil in this and that, but you have the one dwelling in you that is stronger That's than right. anything Amen. out here in this world. Amen. Verse 32, And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and the people that we saw in it are men of a great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And listen here, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. I want to preach to you this morning about Christians as a grasshopper. Father, I thank you this morning, Lord, for your infallible word, God. I thank you for Sunday school and all that was done. I thank you for the singing and all that was done. And God, I ask that you would just continue to dwell with us in our midst this morning, Father Lord, as we preach your infallible word and as we try to receive what saith the word of God and what the Holy Ghost bids us this morning. Father, I pray for anyone, the one or the two that may be here that's lost and without Christ and without hope this morning. God, that you deal with them in a mightily way this morning through convicting, convicting and drawing power of the Holy Ghost. And Father, that they get John 3, 3 born again today, Father Lord. I'm not trying to pay, pray that in repetition or in vain this morning, but I know it is not your will that anyone would perish, but that all would come to everlasting knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray you would do that in the service this morning. But God, right now, I pray that you would help us to see the type of Christian that we need not to be today. And Lord, I pray that you'd be with us throughout the rest of our day. Get us to the nursing home safely. May we be a light and a ministering spirit to those at the nursing home. And get us back safely to hear what saith the word of God tonight as well. I believe Brother Charlie is the one bringing the message. And if, if it is him, Father God, I pray the same as I pray for anyone else. You'd give them liberty. You'd give them the unction of the Holy Ghost tonight, Father Lord. But I pray and ask for your anointing over my lips this morning and over the ears and hearts of those sitting in the congregation this morning. Father Lord, I love you. I praise you. I ask all this by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by his precious blood. And everyone said amen and amen. amen. And as always, you're welcome to be seated in the presence of God this morning. Christians is a hornet. Christians is an ant. And now we're at the woe. Christians is a grasshopper. Some of you heard me preach on this before, and I uh, usually try to deal with it along the lines of a grasshopper mentality, and we're still going to deal with that briefly, but uh, I got some of my old points, and then God has had one point that I hadn't had before that just will not leave me alone, and uh, maybe where I spend the most time, but uh, as I told you, they've been promised this land of Canaan, and like I said, when God promises something, you need not worry about who's dwelling in it, you need to just worry about doing what God's called That's you to right. do to go and possess it. And, and, and nevertheless, you see a lot of good points in there, a lot of uh, applications you can make in that scripture, you know, or John and Caleb, and I'll deal with that hopefully if time permits, stands up and says, no, we can overtake it. Then you've got the murmurs that stand there and say, no, we're not able to because they're bigger than us and they're meaner than us and they're louder than us. And that's the way the world's working today. That's right. A lot of Christians have sat down and shut up because people run their mouth all the time and they sit and mouth off and mouth off and they keep going and trying to get legislation after legislation and all this stuff and it's just on repetitiveness. repetitiveness. And the problem is, is the Christians have lost the repetitiveness in staying grounded in the same old stuff forever and that's given an open door for the world to get a foothold and try to one-up us. But what needs to happen is we need to be like Caleb and we need to be like Joshua, which I will try to deal with, and stand up and say, no, here's what thus saith the word of God. And bless God, this is the way it's going to be. Amen. Whether you like it or not, this is how it is. Amen? Right. Uh, now listen to me this morning. Christians as a grasshopper. I'm going to deal with some attributes of a grasshopper. Uh, Sister Katie probably feels a little bit more of this message than anyone else because she got teased with a grasshopper the other day at work. And she wasn't a fan. Well, guess what? You don't need to be a fan of Christians as grasshoppers either. Yeah. The first point I'm going to give you about a grasshopper, and you'll notice this with the... You, you, you can notice some of these attributes 
all of these attributes in the mentality of the, 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 the 12 spies that are coming back and bringing an evil report. Now, uh, let me say this at the onset of the message. Can you imagine God promising you something? And he promises you, just, just, just bear with me, he promises you a chunk of land, and you go in and spy it out, and you bring back an evil report of something God promised you? Yeah. Does that make good sense to anybody? No, sir. That'd be like God letting a few of us go up into heaven and we come back down here among some of the people and bring and, and, and bring back an evil report of heaven. That don't make no sense. You, you need to understand today that people get jacked up in their thinking. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I don't care how saved and how godly they are, they still have a flesh pot they carry around every day of their life. That's right. That's right. And sometimes they yield to that flesh, and that's why you've got to be careful with who you listen to, who you watch, who you give much attention to, because they carry around flesh. That goes for me, Jeremy, Gary, anybody. You've got to watch. Yep. That's, right. that's right. And you watch by this right here, yeah. church. That's right. Yeah. Can't, I can't get this to people enough. I can't get this through their heads enough. This is the final authority Amen. right here. Amen. It ain't you preacher. I appreciate people saying I appreciate our pastor and all he does and this and that. But listen to me. It ain't nothing about me. If I ever get off of this, you need to say our pastor is a pile of junk and it needs to get right. right. I don't care how bad it hurts my feelings. That's the way it needs to be today. Amen. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with Christians as a grasshopper this morning, and I pray the Lord will give, give you something from this, something maybe to stray away from, or maybe something in your own life, in your own walk with God, that you need to get right today. That, that, that's, a, that's why we're here. That's right. Amen. 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 We don't come here to feel good. Amen. Now, if you come here and you listen to what saith the Word of God, and you let the Holy Spirit of God beat you down, or deal with you, or even bless you at times, I'm aware of that, You'll feel good. That's right. But you don't need me to preach and tickle your ears That's to make right. you feel good. That's right. You need to let the Word of God do everything it needs to do to you, and the Holy Ghost do everything He needs to do to you to make you feel what you need to feel. That's right. That's right. Now, the first thing I want to say about grasshoppers is a grasshopper has five eyes. You got that? Mm -hmm. Now, you're going to be able to apply this to the modern church. Because here's what the spy said, and here's about where the modern church is at today. They operate completely off vision, what they can see. Yep. And a grasshopper, it says if I can't see it, I don't do it. That's the mentality of a grasshopper here in this text. They couldn't, they, they, they seen it, uh, they seen bad, they seen uh, giants, they seen all of this stuff, but they couldn't see the promise that God had made. And so you've got to make a distinguishing mark between those two and come to this just general conclusion that we know about us today. We walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. 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 But this whole entire world today is gear off sight. Well, I can't see this happen, and so I don't believe God. And i never seen this that the Bible says, so I don't even believe the book is real. And I don't see this, and I don't see that. And then on the flip side of that, you got the modern left-wing liberal crowd, uh, uh, modern church people, that that's all they want to do is operate off sight. Right. Well, that looked cool, and it looked fun, and buddy, i seen what, the, did you see what he did? And uh, Dwayne made this joke here a while back, and I've, I've brought this story up a million times. Well, I drove by there, and there's a lot of cars outside, so they must be doing something, right? That's using your sight. That's right. That's right. As opposed to faith and what saith the Word of God. Amen. A grasshopper, if they can't see it, they don't do it. Or, in this new apostolic <coughs> reformation swing we're seeing of things, they want to see everything before they'll believe it or before they'll do it, and they don't care what the Word of God says about it. If it looks cool and it looks fun and it looks interesting to blazes with the Word of God, that just must be right. And neither one of them are okay today. You have to be right there in the middle ground of walking by faith and not by sight today. Amen. Despite what they teach you today, the Jews require a sign. Yep. That's right. Amen. Amen. We are not Jews today. We are not in the tribulation time. We are not in uh, before the time of Christ's dispensation. We are in the church age, and we walk by faith and not by sight today. Right. Now, God will allow you to witness some great things in your walk with God and your journey with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all been saved longer than me. I'm sure Brother Gary and some of you all can testify to some of the amazing things you've seen God do. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. But that's not to be what keeps you walking with God that's is right. what you see and what you that's don't right. see. Yeah. Yeah. It's to be by your trust and your faith in Him no matter Amen. what's going on around you. Amen? Amen. Amen? Now, the grasshopper mentality. God had done promising some. He said, this is yours. You go in and take it. And they said, no, we've seen all these giants in the land and we're, we're smaller than they are. Well, of course you're smaller than they are, dummy. That's why they're called giants. That's right. <laughs> That don't void out what God said. Amen. 
And that's something y'all need to get today. Just because someone's bigger or they seem tougher or they seem mouthier or whatever it is, it's not greater than he that dwells in you today. Yeah, that's right. Amen and amen. amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. That's number one point. Uh, number two point you need to know, and this is a big one. This is a good one. If you take notes, you need to get this one down. Grasshoppers don't have any ears. Everybody hear that? Yeah. Right. They absorb sound through these little receptor deals on their stomach. You say, how do you know that? I don't know. I just study what people that... Uh, don't ask me how you get paid to study grasshoppers, but there's people out there that do it. But I picked up enough grasshoppers as a kid to know they ain't got any of these hanging off the side of their Amen. head. They don't have ears. Mm -hmm. They won't listen. That's right. Yeah. You know what people's problem today is? That's right. They won't Amen. listen. Amen. You say, well, you scream and yell all the time. Well, get over it, man. You won't listen. What do you mean you won't listen? They won't listen to what this says today, church. That's right. right. They won't listen. God had done told them something, but they let their eyes override what they'd heard from God. That's Amen? Right. You, you see this playing out today, and then you begin to apply this to the modern church. You say, hey, you may want to back off from so-and-so because they're a false teacher. They won't listen. That's right. You say, hey, that's kind of against God and His Word. They won't listen. That's right. Yeah, but did you see what I see? That's the kind of stuff you get into. They won't listen. It reminds me of a group of people that we was warned about that would have itching ears and would not endure sound doctrine. Yeah. Yeah. You understand having an itching ear doesn't have anything to do with a listening ear. It means your ear itches and you want it scratched. That's right. You ever seen a dog lay around and scratch at its ear all the time? Mm -hmm. That's like a bunch of Christians today. That's right. Lay around and lick themselves and scratch their ear all day long. That's right. about as deep as it gets with most people. Amen? Amen. Amen. So that's probably a little vulgar, but I mean, it just is what it is, man. I've had a gut full. It's time to get in the Word of God. Amen. And let's see, let, let's see who God is today. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Quit having an itching ear. Start enduring some da sound doctrine. They have no ears. They absorb everything through their stomach. You remember when Paul talked about the people whose God was their belly? That wasn't just talking about food today, church. It's talking about people that are hyped up on everything they can absorb entertain, entertainment-wise and things that are fluff and they feel good and it just makes them feel good all over, but they won't listen to what anybody has to say. Right. You got that today? Amen. They don't have any ears. Brethren, I know multitudes of Christians and churches that have no 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 hearing today. That's Completely right. deaf. Yep. They don't hear nothing. They won't hear nothing. They won't listen to nothing. They won't be told anything by anybody if they're scriptural and they can back it up with the Bible. They won't listen today. That's right. I'm not going to share the analogy with you again that I give you a hundred times, but people be like dogs and they won't listen. They're just looking for movement. And maybe they listen to a tone, but they won't listen to what saith the word That's of God. That's right. Right. I wouldn't follow so and so. He's a false teacher. Oh, you, 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 you're, you're such a bigot, judgmental, legalist. There's people that won't listen. That's right. They operate off feeling. They operate off what they can see. He looks good. He's got that that new modernistic term. He's got that swag. It just looks so good, and I like to watch him preach. And he does all these great illustrations. So, well, who gives a rip, man? What is the pre What is he preaching out of? And what's he preaching about? That's what I want to know. Amen. Right. But they won't listen. They want to be entertained. I don't remember who it was. Uh, Spurgeon or one of them guys, D.L. Moody, somebody. He said he, he was afraid to see the time when pastors would quit feeding the sheep and start entertaining goats. And that's where we're at. That's right. Yeah. Entertaining goats, brethren. Now listen. Jesus said in Revelation all through there, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. It's time to listen. That's right. right. It's time to listen. Jeremy, uh, I'm, I don't give him credit very often, but Jeremy has be, became a very good Sunday school teacher. I'm, very, I'm very impressed. Not that it matters if I'm impressed or not, but I'm just letting giving him a compliment or a compliment somebody once in a while. He became a very good teacher this morning. I don't know how many of you got it, but he was a lot deeper than most Sunday school teachers are going to take. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I had one say, I'm, I'm just lost. And I said, well, you need to go back and watch it. And I didn't realize the live feed kind of cut out, but there's another thing to go back and watch. Um, but... It was good. It was in depth. Yeah. People don't like that anymore. People are like, I just, um, it's so boring. I just can't follow along. That's because you don't give a rip what this book says That's and you right. don't study it. That's right. That's right. He's up here giving you some stuff that you ain't probably never heard in your life, but it's right. scripturally true. Yeah. That's right. It's time to listen. That's right. Amen. I don't say this for me. I don't say this for Gary. I don't say this for the song leaders. I don't say this for the Sunday school teachers. But when they're giving you what God has given them, it's time to listen. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And none of us are above listening. That's right. 
I sit out there and try to absorb everything I can while trying to prepare for Sunday morning and prepare for the nursing home and whatever else may be taking place. I try to absorb all I can. That's all I do all week long is listen to somebody else preach. Amen and amen. 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 We're never too good to listen, but we've got a whole generation of people because they've got degrees now they think they don't got to listen to anybody. That's right. Billy Graham, despite the pile of trash I've learned out, yes, I'm saying it, I know you, oh, don't not Billy Graham, but despite the pile of trash I've learned he became in his latter years, he still had a preacher that he went to for ministry all the time. That's right. Yep, amen. Arrogant, man. People are arrogant. I just, right. I know too much. I don't need any help for you. You don't tell me you ain't going to do this. That's the kind of attitude you've got towards people that God has given a voice. Then that's the kind of attitude you've got towards God. That's right. I ain't nothing special, but I'm going to tell you what the book says. Amen. 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 It's time to listen. We don't need it. We don't need to live as a grasshopper. We don't need to operate off our eyesight and what we can and can't see. And always trying to, uh, you know, never walk by faith anymore. It's all about what we can see. And we need to. We need to allow the Holy Ghost to open our ears and quit absorbing sound through our stomach all the time. That's right. He that hath ears, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the seven churches. Mm -hmm. I understand those dispensations of time. I, you know what time, what church dispensation we're in right now? Laodicea. Yep. Don't listen. Yep. Don't listen. Modern churches, don't listen. Won't listen. You try to show them something in the Scripture, won't listen. You're a legalist. You're a bigot. You're hateful. You're narrow-minded. You're just a Pharisee. They will not listen. That's right. Let it not be said about you today, brethren. Amen. Amen. And here's one God really hung me up on this week. Never had this point when I preached out of this text. Never even thought about it as much as I've seen grasshoppers, as much as I hate the stupid things when I'm mowing and they and stick on the inside of my bare arm and it likes to give me a heart attack because I think it's a wasp. <laughs> Never thought about this. They got some ginormous legs. <laughs> you ever seen how far a grasshopper jump? Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. 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 Now listen to me. Never even thought about this before, but God's dealt with me over and over. And I think I woke up at like 3 o'clock this morning with this thought in my mind, and God just kept dealing with me and dealing with me about grasshopper, grasshoppers having these big legs, and, and, and it allows them to jump all over the place. Anyone get this yet? Yeah. It allows them to jump all over the place, all the time, jumping here, jumping there. And I thought, man, that seems pretty interesting because a hornet, they get in and fight. Yep. Yep. Right. And ant, they get in and work. Yep. 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 Where in this book are we called to jump all over the place? We're not. Now listen to me. I look at what Danny Castle said years ago. He said some of the exercise, some of the only exercise Christians ever get is running down their neighbor, pushing their luck, and jumping to conclusions. That's right. Now, now that's one aspect of jumping. A lot of people jump to conclusions. Amen. I mean, Amen. You, you women can. I'm being sexist, but you women have a problem with that sometimes. Jumping Amen. to conclusions. Amen. Amen. I've seen men do it, but that's a man that thinks and acts like a woman or has a temporary weakness where he acts like a woman for a moment, but we sometimes jump to conclusions. That's right. That's right. That's right. But where in this book are you called to jump away all the time? Every time God's called you to something, you jump the other direction. Jonah was a jumper for a moment. God told him to go preach to an Nineveh, and brethren, he jumped to a boat and ended up getting jumped out into the water. That's right. But where are you called to jump this morning? Now listen to me. I'll give me a whole little section here this morning. I'll be as brief as I can. I'm trying to hurry. But I, here's what I wrote. Aren't we just a bunch of jumping fools in this generation? Amen. You know? We jump from, and he, he, here's the notes, we jump from church to church. Right. Now listen, I understand in these last days, it's hard to find a biblically, doctrinally sound church. That's right. That's right. But I just tell you something I learned a long time ago, and I'm not trying to be arrogant, I'm really not, but God has just given me this this, this this inclination at a young age. When someone new comes to the church and the first thing out of their mouth is they've been to a lot of churches, it's a red flag to me. Amen. You know? Last time that happened, I told my wife, I said, well, here's what they told me. I said, you better, better just wait because they ain't going to be around long. Yeah. They ain't here yeah. today. Amen. 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 They're those little nitpickers that jump from church to church and find every fault they can. That's right. right. And right. find every little problem they they can. And I'll say it again. The problem they found wasn't a little problem. It's because we wouldn't condone their alcoholic, loving, Amen. trashy mind. Right. 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 But they go from church to church and jump from here to here. And that's the grasshopper mentality we see people in today. Well, so-and-so made me mad, and I'll just go over there. And so-and-so looked at me funny, and I'll just go over there. Or the daycare over here is better. Or that preacher's skinny jeans are tighter over here, and I like that better. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He shows more ankle at this one. 
That's what people do today, guys. Uh, don't, don't try to kid me. I've watched this stuff long enough to know this. That's what people do. They jump from church to church to church to church. And I'm asking you today to show me one place in this book where we're called to jump around all of our lives. Amen. They jump from doctrine to doctrine. That's right. Well, one week we believe this, and now we believe this, and now we believe that, and now we don't believe this anymore, and we believe that, and we believe this, and we believe... Hold fast to sound doctrine. Amen. They jump from version to perversion. Yep. That's right. Yeah, I'm on the Bible versions. Yep. If you're going to go to this church, you're going to hear this frequently. Amen. Amen. God's give me a voice, I'm going to speak out. That's right. Amen. They jump from version to version. Yep. You know, there for a while there was a new Bible version every six months, almost. Yep. Some people, pretty stupid if you ask me. Amen. That's right. Can't Amen. pin it down yet. Every six months you got to come out with a new one. But what's that say about the people that jump to that stuff every six months? Yeah. You done, you done chased a God that can't pin it down for you. That's who I'd follow. Yeah. Now I'll just lay my head on my pillow and I'd stick by the old arcade. Amen. I'll, I'll stick with the one that's done more than these perversions will ever do in a lifetime. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. But they jump from version to version, to version to version, from church to church, from doctrine to doctrine, this and that, and on and on and on and on and on and on it goes. Bible says be rooted, be grounded. Amen. Right. We're not to get that grasshopper, be a Christian as a grasshopper and get them big old salty legs that want to jump at every little thing that comes by. We are to get rooted and we are to get grounded. And when someone ticks you off, you're to stay rooted and you're to stay grounded. And when a preacher preaches something that you don't like and it hurts your feelings, you're to stay rooted and you're to stay grounded. Amen. And when I get up and hammer on that King James, you're to stay rooted and you're to stay grounded. Amen. Amen. And when Jeremy teaches you something that Grandma and Grandpa didn't believe, but he can back it up scripturally, you're to stay rooted yeah, and you're to stay grounded. Amen. Now the Holy Ghost is here. That's right. I, 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 I'm, 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 he, he's talking to me right now. It, it's going real good. But listen to me. You're to stay rooted and you're to stay grounded. Amen. You're not to That's get your right. feelings hurt. You're not to have someone look at you cockeyed and get your, your, your panties Amen. in a bunch and jump from here to here to here That's to here. Right. You're to stay rooted and you're to stay grounded. Preach it. This little, this little coddling sissy law law stuff we've been indoctrinated with, well, when I don't like something, I'll just go somewhere else. That's why the divorce rate is through the roof today. That's, right. That's, right. Yeah. That's why kids are running around with no mama and no daddy or yeah. one or the other. Amen. Because I just don't like it and I'll go somewhere else. Yeah. No, rooted and grounded. Amen. Amen. If you're going to be a heretic, at least be rooted and grounded into the heresy you believe. Amen. <laughs> Amen and amen. 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 See, I can deal with someone saying, well, I don't I don't agree with you, preacher. I think this perversion's better. If you're going to be that way, then at least get up and tell others that's what it is. Yep. Instead of saying they're all God's word, they all could get the ecumenical mindset out and at least just stand for something. Amen. You, know? right. you say, Well, I think my preacher, even though he's up there splintering in tongues every five seconds and knocking people in the head every ten minutes and casting demons out and doing all this apostolic stuff that we know scripturally if we'd rightly divide the word truth, they right. You at least get it in your mind to stand up and say, This is it. Instead of saying, Well, I think everybody's just going to the same God and we're just Amen. taking different No, at least get rooted and get grounded, even if you're going to believe a heresy Amen. all your life, get faithful to it. That's right. Amen. My gosh, man, Jim Jones had more sense than that. He took it to the bloody end. That's right. Amen. Amen. But instead, everyone's all ecumenical. Now we just do our own thing. Okay, you pot smoking hippie. That's not what you're called to do. Amen. You're called to get in and serve God and stick doctrinally what God says and stay rooted yeah. and grounded. grounded. That's right. Amen. Wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous is as bold as a lion. That's right. Amen. I don't know who gave me that sermon note out there. I think it was Mike, but that's a good one. Rooted and grounded, church. Right. Ain't church to church, doctrine to doctrine, version to version, and this and that. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Yep. Amen. 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 One, not all over the place, not bounce around here, bounce around there, and I don't like it. Or, now listen, if your church does something ungodly, and it won't get right, and it won't preach it right, and it won't fix it and make it right, if it was truly something unscriptural, ungodly, then yeah, it's a good time to jump somewhere else. Amen. You know what I'm talking about today. Getting in your feelings and jumping from place to place. Yep. Amen. Hmm. Everybody jumping around like a bunch of wild maniacs. Bunch of Comanche Indians jumping from place to place. 
I, I know them people, do you? Yeah, I've been around them, I know them. Yeah. Well, I just don't. And, and, and let me tell you something. Let, let me help some of y'all because you, you go through this maybe not as much as preachers do sometimes. But whenever someone gets mad or gets upset in, in, the, in the wrong atmosphere in terms of whether they're, what they're mad about isn't even script, has nothing to do with scripture or anything, you will never, ever, I'm trying to help you today, you will never, ever, ever, ever hear them say they did anything wrong or this or that. It will always be your fault. Right, Suck right. it up and get yeah. over it. Yeah. Anyone that ever got mad and left because of me, it was my fault. Right. Nothing they did, no lacking on their part. They were a perfect church member. They were a perfect Christian. It was my fault. Okay. Anyone that's ever left because they didn't like Jeremy, it wasn't because they were. Uh, they had nothing to do with them. They were a perfect Christian. They were perfect in all their ways. It was his fault. Suck it up and get that's over right. it. Amen. Men, you know this better than anybody. It's always your fault. Y'all get that? Yeah. You need to apply that in the church world. I'm being mean to you women today. I'm sorry. My wife ain't done nothing to upset me. I'm just being honest with you. It's always going to be your fault. No one ever, ever, ever in this generation has the call to stand up and say, you know what, I could have been doing better and I could have done some things a little bit different. It's never going to be that way. It's going to be what you didn't do or what you did do and how bad you were and how horrible you were. And that's just the way it is, brethren. You better suck it up and get used to it. Right. Right. They don't just go in church life. That goes in all walks of life. That's right. Amen and amen. amen. Anytime I get upset, I got the, the quickness of that mentality to say, well, it's their fault. Yeah. And maybe there's some things I did wrong. It's possible. Yeah. I've been wrong a few times. Amen. amen. That's a joke. I've been wrong a whole lot. And how the Facebook believes like to twist your words. Y'all ever notice that? They'll clip stuff. Yep. They don't clip my sermons yet. I ain't famous. Nobody knows who I am. But they'll clip these preachers' words, especially in the IFB realm. They'll clip little snippets of what they say to try to make them look like wild nut jobs or heretics or this and that and leave the rest of everything out. Yep. That's how media works, brother. That's right. I ain't going down that road because it ain't even knows. But listen to me. You're not called to jump away today. Amen. 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 I, I, I don't, I, I, sometimes I wonder if I'm okay with, for saying this, but God ain't just slapped me over the head for it. But I can think of no other place in this county you need to be in than right here in this church. Amen. Amen. You say, what a stat at all the other churches. There's a lot of churches around. I don't know. They may be good churches. But from what I know, yeah. I just plant it here. Amen. I just get gr grounded and rooted here. I just stick here. Amen. Amen. I got news for you. We saved and we're going to heaven. All these little jack legs that don't like me and don't like some of the other people in here, you better get used to it if you're saved because you're going to be with us for an eternity. Amen. Amen. Well, that's going to be awkward, ain't it? Woo! <laughs> Can't stand that Preach stupid it. preacher and that teacher over there and that, that, all their hateful bigotry. you got to be around me for all eternity. Amen. <laughs> you better put a smile on your face and suck it up. Amen. 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 Bunch of egg sucking water pots, man. I never seen nothing like it. If you're going to be a heretic, at least be grounded and rooted in your heresy. Amen. I, I'm not saying that for encouragement for you to do that. I hope you're getting what I'm saying. That's here. right. Where are you called to jump away? Are you? I don't think you are. One thing we know about grasshoppers is they devastate the food crops. Don't you be a grasshopper today. Yeah. Yeah. This right here. Holy ground, good good land. We're trying to plant. We're trying to sow. We're trying to bring forth fruit for the Lord. That's right. Amen. You hear what I'm saying today? Right. They'll devastate food crop. Big time devastation. You got that today? Yeah. Yeah. So what happens is we sow and we water and we sow and we water and then, oh, look, here comes a grasshopper. Come in here and chew something all to pieces. Yep. Yep. With our mouth. Yep. Yep. Their mouth. Yep. Mm -hmm. Maybe it comes by gnawing on one another. See, one grasshopper in a 10-acre field can't do Jack Dilly squat. But you know the thing about grasshoppers? Because Satan's an imitator, they tend to congregate as well, just like a body That's of believers. Right. Yep. And so you get one old so-and-so over here that starts chewing on this one over here, and they start chewing on that one over here, and they start chewing on that one over here. Before you know it, the whole, the whole blessed crop is just all to pieces. That's right. Don't be a grasshopper today. Amen. Amen. Can't do much, but they tend to swarm. They tend to, they tend to congregate. Ladies, sorry. Sometimes, and us men, we're guilty of doing that too. 
But there's just something about a woman that's got to go get everybody on their side. Hey, Amen. Amen. Y'all getting quiet and you getting mad, but like I say, just get rooted and grounded and planted and you'll be okay. That's right. Right. Amen. There's men that run them out too much, but there's just something about my experience in church world where women, they got to get everybody on their side and they got to get them thinking the way they're thinking. If they don't like one woman in the church, they've got to get everyone else to hate that woman with them. I've seen it. I'm aware of it. I know how it works. Right. Yep. Right. Amen. Amen. I just don't like her, and I just don't think this. And what do you think about that? And I bet, you, just like Danny Castle said, I'm telling you, need to listen to that man preach from time to time. Amen. Just like he says, Amen. well, she's got different makeup on, and she's wearing a different style of clothes now. I think she's having an affair. That's the kind of stupidity a lot of women That's can bring right. out from yep. time to time. Yep. Just ignorant stuff. And some of those men, other times I get I get struggle with my mouth. Amen. 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 But I'm telling you right now, at the end of the day, this is a harvest field. We are trying to bring forth fruit, and we need not to devastate the crops and tear it to pieces and chew it all up and mess it up. Yeah, that's right. right. One can't do much, but they tend to swarm. Someone comes to you and tries to get you to chew on something that you know don't need to be chewed on, you do well to say, hey, listen, let's not do that. Let's pump the brakes a minute. Amen. Amen. And what do we know about a grasshopper? How many of you have caught a grasshopper? Uh, no, thank you. You know I mean? My gosh, y'all didn't grow up in the country or poor or something. Oh, I did, but I didn't like them. Catch them. <laughs> I don't like them. What's the first thing to do when you catch one? I put it in the Spit on you. Yes, See, we're back to the mouth stuff. You say, I don't know what you're talking about. Go out here in this field next next door after we get done and go find your grasshopper and catch him and get to fiddling with him. He'll spit this brown vomit stuff on you. Nope. And it stains you big time. I'll take your word for it. It stains. You catch one of them grasshoppers, they'll spit on you. Now what I'm saying is, a Christian is a grasshopper. It spews forth poison trying to stain everyone they come into contact with. Yep, that's right. Yep. That's what they do. Yeah. You get something spewed out on you, and it stains you. It has many dramatic effects down the road. But listen to me. I'm trying to warn you today. If you get spit on by one of these grasshoppers, here's what will happen. Well, you'll start going downhill, and you say, I can't go to church over there anymore. They spit on me, and it stained me, and da 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 I'm trying to warn you of the side effect of catching one or being around one. It will stain you. <laughs> Ladies or men, you spend enough time around one and keep letting them spit on you and spit on you and spit on you, it's going to stain you to the point where you're going to be just like they are. That's right. That's right. Now, I, I don't let me finish what I'm going to say before you all jump at the gun here. But see, what I used to do when I caught them is I pulled their head off. Let me finish, because you can't do that in here. <laughs> but you've got to find a way to deal with it. Amen. You hear me? Yep. Don't don't grab them by the waist and try to pull their head off. It will not work. But when you pull the head off a grasshopper, it couldn't spit on you no more. Maybe just what Barney Five would call nip it. Does that yep. sound better? Amen. Yep. Say, hey, no, that's good. Listen, they're trying. He's trying. She's trying. They're trying to do their best. Now, unless they're walking in outright blasphemy against God and his word and doing something just completely ungodly, then, yeah, there's times things have to be dealt with. But just to sit around and nitpick because you don't like something, I'd say we'd do well to shut our mouth. Amen. 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 And quit trying to stain everyone you come into contact with. And if you're not a grasshopper today, don't let someone stain you because they want to sit and run and run and run and run and run that mouth. Amen. Yep. I can't go to church here anymore. I can't serve God anymore. They spit on me, get stain me, this and that. You, you're in the wrong business. Amen. You're in the wrong business. One of the things we know about grasshoppers, see, I'm almost done. One of the things we know about grasshoppers is they make a lot of noise. Yes, they do. They make a lot of noise. And you know what God said to me when I when I read that little fact about grasshoppers? He, he immediately referred me to point two. They make a lot of noise, but they don't hear good themselves. Right. It's like the modernistic church we deal with. They make a lot of noise, but they won't hear nothing. You're going to come up. You, let, listen to me. Here, here's my notes. This is real deep. This is some theo, 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 theological. I can't even speak today. Theological. This is some deep theological dip right here you're about to get. They make a lot of noise, but they don't hear themselves. Check out those next note. Keep your mouth shut. Amen. You say, well, you get to get up and run your mouth all the time. I'm called to do so. I'm called to preach. Amen. Amen. Brother Gary's called to preach. Brother Charlie got a calling on his life. Brother Jeremy got a calling on his life. We're called to get up and say something. Amen. Amen. 
You are allowed to say stuff in this church. You are allowed to come to us with questions. You are allowed to have a question if you don't understand something. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about people who want to shoot off at their mouth all the time, and God ain't called them to do nothing. That's right. That's, right. That's being one of them grasshoppers that make a lot of noise, but you don't hear so good yourself. Everybody feeling good in here? Amen. 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 I'm about to walk down to that chair. And I'm about to look up at this pulpit and I'm about to amen myself if y'all don't get happy. <laughs> don't be a grasshopper that sits around making a lot of noise, but don't hear so good yourself. Amen. 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 I know these people. God's never called them to pastor a church, but bless God, they know everything you need to That's do. That's right. That's right. God's never called them to preach, but bless God, they know what your sermons need to be, how long they need to be, the way you need to address them, the way you need to serve them up. They know all about it, but God ain't never called them to do it. Amen. That's a grasshopper. You make a lot of noise, but you don't hear well yourself. Amen. You know what the problem is with the grasshopper mentality or Christian as a grasshopper? You read it in the chapter, you don't do what God's called you to do. That's right. You won't do anything God has called you to do. God said that's your land. Go and take it and possess it. They go in with 12 spies, come back and say we're not able to. You get two men out of that bunch that say we can. I'm going to deal with them here in just a second since I'm making good time. I'm going to deal with them in just a second. But you get two men out of those 12 spies and say, no, we're able to do it. But the rest of them said, we can't do it. That is a grasshopper mentality. That is knowing that God has given you something like his word or promise, whatever it is, and you won't go through with it because you've got a grasshopper mindset. That's right. That's right. You're looking at everything else. You're constantly looking to see what you can see or what you can't see. You're constantly not hearing nothing because you're absorbing everything through your stomach. If it feels good, if it makes your body. I mean, I could have preached on music on that if I wanted to. Amen. We're talking about people getting their feelings hurt in this generation. Preach about music. Amen. And I got bad news for you. I'm getting real close to cutting one loose. Amen. Because I've been studying about That's you. Right. Yeah, go ahead and try it again, Satan. <laughs> I'm about to cut one loose. Amen. Amen. You need to understand today that just because we know modern versions or, or, or Bible, you put a Bible here. I need me a Ruckman board, I guess. You put a Bible up here, and we understand that everything devolves. We understand the Bible devolves because of perversions. We understand that, that morals devolve because of perversions. Where do we get this harebrained idea that music don't devolve with That's it? Right, That's right. Y'all right. Right. need to get that one in your mind today. That's right. That's right. Amen. You know Bible versions have devolved because they left the one true one for the English-speaking people. Somebody say amen. 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 You know that morals have devolved. You know that the way churches operate have devolved. Amen. You know all this stuff is Devolved. Right. What are you doing not looking at that little musical note up there? Amen. Wonder if it's devolved. Yeah. You know why music never gets touched? Because it's one thing that we absorb and it makes us feel good. That's right. All right. Yeah. I'm right. Yeah. Because I know what the book, the book says. Amen. And I'm just telling you, maybe before too long we'll cut one loose and see how your feelings feel. You you ain't looking at nobody. You're looking at somebody that loves music just as much as anybody else in here. Amen. I mean, used to be obsessed with it, and I'm still obsessed with it. I just have to find it every day which direction it's Amen. going to be. Amen. That's right. Amen. Not like I used to. do it. It's almost a no-brainer for me now. But I have to take trips into Dollar General. I have to take places and trips into places like you do and hear some filth thought that I used to love. That's right. Grasshopper never gets done what God's called them to do. The bees, they do what they're called to do. They build their nests. They sting when it needs to be uh, defended. They attack when it needs to be defended. Uh, hornets and bees, everything alike, they're working for the queen. We work for the king. You take the ant. They're always working, doing what they're supposed to do, building their nest, getting everything ready for winter. All that stuff. Grasshopper don't do nothing but bounce around and tear up stuff. That's right. That's right. I think there's two decent grasshoppers. I had some notes on this from a long time ago. I didn't put them down in this one. There's two decent grasshoppers. Uh, I don't remember what one of them does, but one of them actually leaves the field in better shape than it was when he found it. Amen. Amen. That's right. When you come here, you need to leave this field in better Amen. shape than when you found it. Amen. Amen. But you don't need any of those other attributes that same grasshopper has. <laughs> you got that? Right. right. Now listen, we uh, I, I don't know how good we are on time, but I don't care. Uh, go back here to, we read 13. You immediately read the end of that chapter and go into 14, and all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. These people are crying because God promised them something and now they don't think they can go do it. You ever think you put yourself in a bigger mess than it really is? Because yep. you won't just trust God? Amen. 
You're sitting there letting the devil beat you down over something God's done told you is going to be right. away. Amen. Putting yourself through all kinds of anguish, all kinds of sorrow, not just looking at things above. Amen. And walking by faith and saying, yep, there, there it is. There it is. It's going to be all right. Amen. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron and the whole congregation and said unto them, would God that we had died in the land of Egypt or would God we had died in this wilderness? Now I'm telling you, I don't try to be arrogant to say I wouldn't have had the same struggles as the Jews did. I don't know. I'm not in that situation. But look how, how deep it gets here. And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? Bless my soul. Has anyone in here ever read a book of Exodus? Amen. Has anyone ever seen what God did through Moses in the book of Exodus? Amen. Has anyone ever sit and witnessed the stuff that the Jews seen out there when God was doing that stuff That's to the, right. them in Exodus? Amen. Amen. Holy Ghost blowing all over the place right now. How do you go from that to God just sent us out here to die? It'd be better if we was back in Egypt. Can I tell you something? It's never, ever, ever better back where God called That's you right. from. Amen. Never. Amen. God is still a good God today. Amen. And just because you're Preach looking it. at bad circumstances and you're looking at bad situations yes. and maybe even death is approaching your door does not change the fact that He brought you out of Egypt and you're headed for glory today. Amen. How in the world do we get that mentality all the time? And we've all struggled with it. It's just been better back in the old days. No, it wouldn't have. No, it wouldn't have. Tell the enemy to shut up and sit down and shut up and lie down. Amen. It will not be better back in Egypt. Amen. Ever. Amen. Amen. The modern perversions that come from Egypt, Alexandria, they won't be better than the one God give you, by the way. Amen. Amen. And I said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Brother Gary, I didn't even notice this. I was just sitting here reading through this this morning. And that word stuck out to me. Let us, let us make a captain and let, let us return into Egypt. Jesus Christ is the captain of your salvation. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You want a captain to take you back off into Egypt, it is not the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. It's the one that Jeremy taught you about all blessed morning long, a counterfeit. Yeah. He'll counterfeit you into thinking you need to get out of Church, That's you right. need to get out of your Bible, right. you need to get out of prayer, yep. and you need to get back out in here where you've got friends in low places like them old wine, old drunk country music singers sing about. That is not where you need to go today. Amen. Amen. You need to stick with the captain of your salvation. That's right. The Lord Jesus Christ. Look here. Here's what we need today. We don't need grasshoppers. Look up here. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. Look at old Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Tetnua, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. Now, if you don't know what that means, you need to go do your own studying. Figure out what it means when they rent their clothes. But listen to what they said. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land. That's right. That's right. Look here, the next four words. And give it us. That's right. Amen. A land which floweth with milk and honey. Amen. 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 Do you get what these men are saying? They're preaching to grasshoppers. They've been told by God Himself through Moses they're going to get it, and they argue. Right. Now they're standing up again, Moses, Joshua, and Caleb telling them. Amen. That's right. And what are they telling them? God can. God That's can. Right. God will. Amen. God will. Amen. That's, right. Amen. That's what they're telling them. Only rebel not against the Lord. Rebel, only rebel not ye against the Lord. Neither fear ye the people of the land. They, for they are bread for us. <laughs> mm. Their defense is departed from them. And the Lord is with us. That's right. Fear them not. Amen. I'm about to have a about to have a Pentecostal fit in here. Y'all that highlight, y'all that underline, you need to jump in there about verse nine and just scribble that dude and highlight it and get it all reared up in the forefront of your mind. That's right. Amen. And then get the air knocked out of you like I have as a preacher when you deal with the people in verse ten. But all the congregation bade, stoned them with stones. Huh. Man gets up and says, Thus saith the Lord, and this is the way it's going to be, and they want to pick up rocks. That's right. That's right. 
if if the modern church wasn't so effeminate and so cowardly, they'd be slinging rocks at us every That's Sunday. Right. That's right. Right. Because I'll get up here and preach to you. I'll nail your hide to the wall if Amen. God tells me to do it. Amen. And I don't care where, where you're at and what sin it is. If God says you preach against it, I'm gonna preach against Amen. it. Amen. So, you bounce rocks off my head all you want. Come Stephen on. had it, went to glory. Paul, they tried it, and he got to keep preaching. I got a good outcome either way. Amen. I'm either going to get to keep preaching or I'm going to go home. It don't matter to Amen. me one way or the other. But I know this much. I'm not giving up. Amen. Amen. Bade them, stone them, bade, stone them with stones. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation for all the children of Israel. Now listen, if you read on and on, you learn what happens. Everybody remember what happened? No, I'm not going to tell you. If you don't have a yes for that, you can go study your Bible. God promised them it, and they wouldn't listen. That's right. Amen. You had a few men that would get up and say, no, we need to go take it. You know all this church needs today is a few men, and I think we've got more than that, Amen. that'll get up and say, no, this is, this is what we need to do. We need Amen. to keep on doing what we've been doing. Right. We need Amen. witness. We need to preach that book. We need to teach that book. We need to try to do things decently and in order like the Bible says. Yep. That's, That's right. right. That's all we need. Now, it stinks when you get a whole group of people that want to get up and stone you to death and this and that. That sounds like a bunch of deacons' wives to me. I can't prove that one way or the other. But I'm telling you right now, they as people, I just, Mike was sitting next to me yesterday when Danny Castle called me and he was telling me some of the stories about the way the mountain churches operate. Preachers getting voted out in the parking lot before a business meeting even takes place. That's right. And you know why people do that? Because that preacher said something that hurt their feelings. That's right. He preached about some sin. Probably a sin they used to amen when he preached about, but their little kid was their kid was tangled up in it now, and now it ain't, it ain't amen grounds. Bingo, that's right. Huh. I'm gonna I'm gonna finish. You need to get verse 14, and y'all need to get nine. Only rebel not against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Amen. Amen. What a message. Yep. That, th this is a good message for you all today. That's right. Yep. Amen. You saved today? Amen. 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 You've got so much the more. That's right. You've got an indwelling of the Holy Ghost, of the Comforter that Amen. dwells inside of you. That's right. Amen. They didn't have it in the Old Testament like we got it here in the New Testament. That's right. Amen. 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 We've got something to shout about today. That's right. That's right. And we've got a God that is for us. And if God be for us, who can be against That's us? That's right. Amen. That's right. All this little riffraff we deal with and all this little stuff that I get all fired up about my blood pressure raising and Dwayne, all of us get all that way with all the stuff we see. I mean, yeah, it's fun. I guess it's good for your blood circulation. But at the end of the day, we are the vic victors. Amen. You know? Amen. We are victorious. It's going to be all right. That's right. I know where we're headed. I know who's coming to get us because I know who the captain is. Amen. Amen. And don't you let that stinking enemy for one second ever make you think you need to go back to Egypt. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. I tell you what you find over there. Turmoil. That's right. Heartache. That's right. Death. Amen. Misery. Sorrow. Pain. Yep. Amen. Right. You feel a little bit of that stuff here in this life, walking with God, but it ain't worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us like Amen. Romans chapter 8. That's right. Yep. right. It's a whole different atmosphere, brethren. And I'm going to finish with this this morning. Y'all can go ahead and stand. Some will make their way up. And I'm talking about Christians as a grass. You better get that mentality out of you real quick because a grasshopper don't do nothing that it needs to do for the Lord. But I'm going to tell you this this morning. This world is plummeting fast. The churches are plummeting fast. Amen. Amen. You men get up here and pray with Brother Travis. They are in hell hole shape. The doctrine they learn, the mentality that they get, the kind of discipleship that they get, is an absolute pit of hell type of thing. So you sit out there all comfy and think you ain't got much to pray about, you can come pray for some of these modern churches. Because when this thing unravels like it's about to and the, the, the rubber meets the road, brethren, it ain't going to be no joke. I mean, i got enough of my own stuff I'm going to have to give an account for. All y'all in here can relate to that. You're going to have stuff you have to answer for you wish you didn't have to answer for. But I'm telling you right now, that don't need to stop us from preaching this book. don't need to stop us from preaching truth. It don't need to stop us from telling, trying to warn others about some of the stuff that's going on. It don't need to stop us from that. That's right, man. Don't be a grasshopper, man. Be a hornet. Amen. Amen.
Go do some singing. Go do some buzzing. Get to work. Grasshoppers don't do nothing. I'm sure there are some benefits to a grasshopper, but sometimes you got to bear with me and get the application I'm trying to give. A grasshopper mentality in the church, trying to serve the Lord, nothing good about it unless you can get that one attribute where you're trying to leave the field in better shape than it was when you found it. But you don't need none of them other attributes. Like he overpowered me and all and on and on and on. What a miserable way to go into hell. Mm -hmm. 